Warning, this video contains spoilers for the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure Lost Mine of Fandelver. Do not continue watching this video if you have any intention of playing Lost Mine of Fandelver. Welcome everybody, welcome Tiger. Would any one of the two people who was here for last session like to uh, summarize last session? Very quick summarization of it would be we discovered cave, we discovered goblins in said cave, we fought goblins and a bugbear, and then we took one of the smaller goblins as technically a hostage, I think. I don't know, it, it feels a lot like kidnapping due to that, that she's just going with us because she doesn't want to die. We also found like some items, like a frog and some money. We also found a mistress uh, who will not yes. be relevant ever again. Just going to be sitting off the back of the cart, but just like looking into the beautiful majesty of nature, not saying anything. She's going to go join NPC party. Yeah, you guys are. Mark, you've also got uh, you've also got an injured uh, party member. Uh, Sildar's still injured, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's up to you where you guys want to go and what you want to do. I think we discussed last time that we did want to continue to Thandalin. Sounds good to me. So you guys are going to be making your way back to the road. It took you several hours to get to last time. It, it took you several hours to get from the road to where you are now through the woods, so it'll probably take you a few hours to get back to the main road. So, we just flash back to the main road. Ira. Hello. Oh, after a couple of days on the road yourself, in your uh, borrowed cart, you come down the road not too far from Fandolin, a few hours out, and you happen to see a rather familiar-looking cart lying in the road. On its side, its contents picked over and pilfered, uh, familiar horses lying dead with black arrows in their sides, and evidence of uh, a struggle, including... Uh, the bodies of a couple of goblins sort of hanging out in the underbrush on either side of the road. Well, this, this doesn't look good. Yeah, this familiar-looking cart you would recognize as the cart of your would-be principal, uh, Mr. Gundren Rockseeker. Well, first thing I think he'd do is investigate the area for any clues of where... Because I'm assuming he can't see the corpses of any humans or... No, it's it's empty, empty of, of corpses other than goblins. Uh, you we have a roll, quick look around. You can roll investigation. Are we, oh, Off to a great no. start. You know what? Forget <laughs> of course. it. It's hard to make everything out, but um, the dirt is all kicked up and everything. And you can't tell who was there and who won the battle. Everything has been pilfered from this wagon. All of the uh, barrels and sacks and everything smashed open and empty. Yeah, there's not really much left at this scene. Uh, it is I'm assuming with a one, I don't spot any tracks leading anywhere. Well, <laughs> you can definitely tell that there are tracks, that things are that things have been kicked up, but actually, if you wanted to track away from the scene using footprints, uh, that would actually be a survival rule. Well, if, if he recognizes the tracks, then he'd start looking to where they lead. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and not get very far. You follow what appears to be a set of likely looking tracks off into the woods. About, eh, 20, 25 minutes. And you realize you've lost them. A second, is that it? Nope, that's like wolf tracks or something. Nope, that's not it. And you end up accidentally circling around into the uh, other side of the same clearing. And you are looking at familiar art on its side with dead horses and dead goblins. Uh, Mira's gonna take a minute to consider his options and then he's gonna sit on top of the upturned cart and start drinking until someone gets back. About an hour later, <laughs> you guys push through the dense wood for a couple of hours. It's heading on to dusk. You guys burst out onto the trail and uh, find yourself next to a familiar overturned cart with dead horses and dead goblins, except there is a mysterious stranger sitting up on top of it. Uh, I don't remember that body being here when we were last here. Do, do you remember it, Flint? Flint will shake his head now. Okay, uh, so what do, they, what do they see when they come up? 
Uh, they see a human man, quite tall, very well built, with skin tanned from working in the sun, got a very wide face, and his dark hair and unkept beard are peppered with flecks of grey, and his armour looks like it could benefit from being a little swaying slightly as he sits on the cart and drinks. Who are you? Are you here with the goblins? Mira's gonna quickly look around and yell out, Who said that? Uh, Flint is Flint. gonna emerge from the bushes. So Flint is on the ground, because don't forget, you guys have a big old cart. I'm gonna be on the uh, cart, and I'm gonna just sigh, realizing that I've met another person just like Flint. <laughs> Uh, Mira's going to quickly put his alcohol away, jump off the cart, dust himself off, walk up to Flint and say, Ah, Mr. Gundren Rockseeker, pleasure to finally meet you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Flint doesn't understand what's going on, but he likes the tone of this guy's voice, and he will shake his hand. Apologies for my lateness, uh, Soda, la- la- Lady Soda, she, did, she didn't wake me up. Flint is going to oh. s- turn and stare at Sildar. Yeah, you see, you see a head, a familiar-looking head, uh, Mira, peeking over the edge of the uh, the cart. The middle-aged uh, Lady Sildar, her eyes fall upon you, and then they just kind of narrow. Oh. Ah, Sildar, L- Lady Sildar, greetings. Big fake smile. Oh, Mira, perfect timing. Great to see you. She seems, she seems really pained. Mira's going to lean towards Flint and quietly ask, is she okay? Flint's going to shake his head now. We've just come off um, fighting some goblins. Um, and we're going to the nearest town. If you can provide us some assistance as we're going over there, I'm sure we could make it worth your while. Oh, he's... Uh, he's going to go. He He is honor-bound to go. Mira, this this is not Gundren Rockseeker. Gundren Rockseeker has been taken. We don't know where he is. We have lost our principal. That sounds bad. He is bad, Mira. You, you can tell that uh, that Lady Lady Sildar does not have any love for this person, but she does recognize him. Mira's gonna quietly mumble under his breath, or maybe if we were both here, he wouldn't have been taken. And imagine the goblin ambush would have been made better by a drunk. Everything's made better by a drunk. <laughs> well then, who 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 are you people? I'm um, also with the guild. If by guild you mean the poet society, then yes. <laughs> I didn't realize we had poet society in the bodyguards guild. And what of you, Mister Not Gundren Rockseeker? My name's Flint. That's that's Goblin Slayer. As as, as he says this, um, out of the bush uh, trots an actual barrel wolf, like, not a dog. Actual wolf. He's he's by the way smeared with goblin blood. So is Flint. It's Flint. So is everybody. There's a fine mist of goblin blood about. Uh, Don't worry about the dog. It's best just not to think about it. And Flint goes up and just starts. Petting the snout and hugging the the wolf. As much as I'd love to have a conversation, you could just, you know, come up on this lovely cart we have and we can discuss it as we walk into the village. I'm a little bit afraid of another goblin attack, seeing as this is where they did their last one. Of course, of course. Good thinking, Mr. Poet. What was your name, sorry? Do you not recognize me from my poetry books? It's Vera's Time and Jew. Ah, yes, of course. Up on the cart. A, uh, a tall red dragonborn in shining, gleaming armor who has, uh, you'll notice, uh, a prosthetic leg. He stands up in the cart, his arms akimbo, for a second, and he says, And I am Seth, heir to Clan Abrazir. Remember that name. One day there will be songs sung about it. He gestures wildly with a great hammer that he's pulled from his back. He, he drops it accidentally onto the grass. He's like, oh, damn. I'm going to start explaining to him uh, what happened with Goblin's attacks and uh, point to people as I explain how they joined our our party uh, as we carry on towards the place we're going to. Now, it is heading on towards evening. 
can get to Phandalin within about five or six hours. It is going to be dark. You'll be traveling in darkness. So it's your question as to whether you, you push ahead and make it to Phandalin in the middle of the night or camp and make it there tomorrow morning. Uh, I think it's probably best if we stay the night. Uh, townspeople seem to be very annoyed when you enter or exit their town in the middle of the night, I have found. Uh, Flint is going to shake his head no and point the way forward. Thank you for your addition to the conversation, Flint. Mirror's Mir going to turn to everyone on the back of the car, just all the people that have been picked up and are just hanging around there. Yeah, and this is also there's also two um, uh, two young women in the back, a, a, a tiefling and uh, a woman who appears to be uh, possibly of, of of elvish or mixed human elvish ancestry, uh, and they both just kind of wave. And after turning back to him, he's going to remember that Gundren isn't there, and then turn back forward, and then turn back. Uh, Sildar, what do I do? Uh, you could use your own brain and come to a conclusion. Flint's gonna start moving towards town. Okay, Flint sort of made his own choice. Um, he's a proven fighter, so I'm gonna go with him. Okay, so you guys continue on down the road. Indeed, uh, the shadows grow longer and longer, and it grows dark. About an hour and a half uh, down the road, you start to hear... The unmistakable sounds, wolf howling in the distance. He's gonna look towards uh, Goblin Slayer to see if Goblin Slayer is howling. Goblin Slayer is not howling. It's right next to you, you'd know it. <laughs> but he is, his ears have pricked and he is certainly paying attention. A bush on the right hand side of the trail. What, what uh, previously and what may look still to others uh, as, as though it were part of the bush, sort of like uh, uh, the, the gray brown branches, actually kind of peels away and uh and two wolves and they stride about five feet out from the bush and then they just stand still they don't appear to be threatening sit and they look at the cart the horses are a little bit restless because of this and they they, they kind of try to keep a wide berth but the wolves aren't doing anything they're just looking in any of the crates was there any like salted meats that's going to be traded yes yeah absolutely uh, and then I'm going to throw it as hard as I can, like, t towards the wolves, but, like, a little further off the path. You kind of you kind of throw it off into the bush. One of the wolves kind of breaks away and, you know, starts sniffing at it. And, uh, yeah, he kind of pulls it out of the bush and everything. And the second one comes over. But also, Oblin Slayer is going to depart from the trail, is going to go after the meat as well. Do you actually recognize these other two wolves? These are the other two that fled from the, the hideout. So Goblin Slayer and these other two wolves, they devour the meat. Then the other two wolves depart into the brush. Goblin Slayer looks back at the procession and looks back at Flint. Kind of locks eyes with him for a second. Flint will wave back to Goblin Slayer. Goblin Slayer turns and goes into the bushes after the other wolves. Flint starts nodding to himself, wipes away a tear, and gets back on that trail. He lost, Word. lost a good friend that day. Good friend. Wolves be wolves and they do their own thing. But you continue on through the night. And yeah, you you roll up to uh it's a it's a nicely moonlit night. Moon is uh, nearly full. You crest a hill. You see the little town of Fandolin stretching before you. Oh, at about about one o'clock in the morning. Crumbling stone wall surrounds both ancient ruins. It would seem, from looking, are actively in the process of being disassembled for construction materials, though not now in the middle of the night. Uh, and a few dozen wooden uh, dwellings, far newer. A shallow river lazily winds through, and on a hill overlooking it all, the tall remnants of an old fort serve as a permanent reminder of the revived township's ancient past. Uh, you don't see many lights on in many of the windows as you go through, but uh, go through the gate, it does not seem to be guarded, and you find yourself uh, in the beginning of town. Uh, what sort of things do you guys want to look for? Uh, is there like a water pump anywhere? Uh, not immediately as you come into town, but uh, 
let's say about a hundred yards into town, there's a, uh, there appears to be a, a large pile of wood or dirt or something like that. It's a little hard to tell in the darkness on the side of the road. And that has, that has a, uh, that has a well right next to it, which does have a pump. Uh, in which case, I'm going to get a bucket of water and start cleaning the goblin guts off. Flinch is going to uh, say this yeah. and think that it's a pretty good idea. He is also going to get cleaned up. Yeah, uh, Kalyaseth and, uh, and uh, anybody else who might be covered in goblin guts, and in some cases their own guts, looking at you, Mistis. We'll, we'll, we'll all do the same. Do you want a shower, Tiger? Mira is not covered in goblin guts, but probably could use one. Mira will remain on the cart and drink. Uh, so, with dark vision, you kind of, you know, you're casting your eyes about and everything. There's no one about, but you realize that this large pile that you're right next to is not actually a pile of dirt or a pile of wood. It's actually a structure. Or it was a structure. Given the smell that, that currently creeps into your nostrils as you're doing this, you realize that this is a building that has burned down. The very front of it, where, where you would expect the, uh, the door to be, flowers, bouquets of various kinds are, are, are piled where the doorway once was, but it has been burned down to its foundations. So Flint, mid-shower, is going to get distracted by this and mm -hmm. walk over to see what happened. Uh, Flint, you can roll investigation to ascertain more information about the situation yes, and can... other words that end in Asian. I could definitely try to roll investigation. You could definitely try, yeah. Oh, alright. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. You're looking at this structure. On one side, it seems to be considerably more burned. Whatever fire that raged through here began at one side. The other side, which is more towards the, uh, the entrance, where these flowers are packed, maintains some structural integrity. Kind of looking through the flowers, you can see that there are little uh, rest in peace notes and prayers written in uh, various uh, r prayers of various deities. Uh, a lot of the ashes have been cleared away, so this is uh, this is not new. Alright, we should probably find an inn or something to have a quick rest in before the, the day starts. Well, you look a little bit ways down the road where the buildings start to thicken and you especially see a lot more of those newer wooden buildings instead of like old stone ones. Uh, and uh, you can see a couple of lights on in the distance in that direction. So, uh, you move on with your cart, and uh, very shortly, yes, indeed, you come to what appears to be the center of town. And that light that you saw from a distance is burning in the downstairs window of one of those wooden buildings. A sign hangs from the front, one of those, one of those old-timey wooden signs, sort of a slash down the middle. Uh, on one side is of the woodcut image of a bighorn sheep of some sort and on the other side a set of chain manacles and text beneath it says the ram and shackle in some sort of ram shackle in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no we got it yeah you can uh, leave the uh, cart right on on the side of the curb mira you notice it's a figure that you didn't really see before among the uh the crates and and, and barrels and baskets the cart. It seems to be wearing a potato sack as though it were, you know, a hood. Hops down and starts following them into into the inn. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've got to, you've got to learn to trust you, so we're going to give you the duty of guarding over the cart, okay? Seems like the sort of thing that you would make a person who who, um, you you, you do trust do. Mm, I'm going to learn to trust you by the cart being outside this inn when I come outside tomorrow morning. Um, if you do a good enough job, I'll give you some uh, coin, okay? Uh, okay, okay, all right, I got it, I got it. Well, what the hell is that thing? Sorry. That isn't Gundren and Rock Seeker, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Nostril. Find her in the, the goblin hideout that I was talking about. Uh, uh, she's sort of tugging along. A little orange hand waves. Mira's gonna look at Lady Soda with his eyes wide in a are these people serious? Uh, she just she just shrugs and just like shakes her head wearily and kinda looks off to the side. Uh, when when you were in the cart, uh it, it was quite apparent Lady Sildar is, is rather gravely injured. Um she she cannot move and walk on her own. 
So you're just gonna leave that thing out here with her? I mean, we have the two other people out there with them. Uh, the four of them should be able to fight something off. And are you okay with this soda? And sorry, Lady Soda? Oh yeah, I'm, 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 whatever's fine with the group is fine with me. But she, she raises her crossbow, which is loaded, and kind of gives you a significant look at, like, from you to the crossbow to the goblin. In that case, Mira will shrug and say, Alright, let's drink and head into the end. So you guys enter into uh, this inn. It smells of new construction uh, down the bottom. Everything's quiet. There's sort of the embers of a fire burning in a, in a brazier at the far end. There is not immediately anyone apparent, but there is a bell up at the front desk. Flint will immediately ring it. Three times. I don't take the bell so he doesn't manage to do a fourth. <laughs> that, that is the only reason why there is not a fourth. Uh, th- a door, a door that's uh, that's behind the uh, desk there uh, opens. Does the the person when they open the door face us? Uh, the thing is, is you see the door open at first and you don't see any movement, but then um, gnome, uh, he he sort of like you hear the sound of like somebody coming up steps and he appears at the top of the desk, sort of wiping sleep from his eyes, but being sort of jolly, and he looks down at you. But we can see his eyes, correct? And he does have them. Yes, you can see his eyes. In which case, Soul Window. All right, Soul Window. So he says, oh, "What do we have here, visitors?" In a gnome voice, and you appear into his deep blue eyes, and you sort of find yourself almost uh, taken away from your body. You find yourself looking through this gnome's eyes. He is comforting. A much smaller gnome. So you know instinctively that this is his son as you are comforting this crying child and the smell of wood smoke is in your nostrils. That's what you see. You come back to your body from this and uh, the gnome is kind of looking at you funny. He's like, Yes, can I help you? Sorry about that. Um, we'd like a room, please, with uh, some beds. Uh, about four of them would be good. Four beds? Uh, and breakfast in the morning as well, please. We'd like your finest rooms, unless those are very expensive. Then we'd like a bit less than your finest rooms. Uh, I understand that you guys are probably from the big city, but um, we really only have one kind of room. It's just sort of the same room over and over again. But we can happily accommodate four rooms. And he takes you down and he brings you to some rooms. He said each one has each one has two beds. First room, Flint is going to get in there and just lay down. Go into the first room. I'm going to go into the second one. Uh, Use flames (laughs) and make myself a nice cup of tea before I head to bed. Very nice. Mira will pull the silver out of his pocket and flick it towards the gnome. Say, extra wine in the morning before heading to his room as well. Yes, sir. I know I'm enabling. Oh, Oh, God. yeah, sorry, did you go to the, the one with Flint or the one with Ferris? Uh, uh, Flint. Cool. Sounds Coffee. like a dangerous combo. <laughs> so, there's there's one place in a room left, right? Second room with me, yeah. Yeah, so, Cal Yusuf just kind of like, partially opens the door to the second room, pokes his head in, makes a direct eye contact with its resident, and goes, Roomies? Sure. <laughs> Fantastic! Night passes without incident. Wake up the next morning. Flint and Mira hear this first. They hear a knock at the door. Uh, I mean, I'd have been awake. I only need to rest four hours, so I. I get oh, gotcha. Now you would Chance. have heard the knock, but it wouldn't have been at your door. Oh, uh, in which case, I, I go to the door that I currently do, and then open up, open it up to see if Flint has caused anything during the night. Varus opens the door to see what's going on. He will see the uh, m- diminutive figure of the gnome from the previous night knocking on the door with a bottle of wine and uh, a tray full of glasses. You know, I, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I, I don't think that the individual you're about to give that wine to will need the glasses. Uh, also, is breakfast ready? Breakfast will be ready in 15 minutes. Flynn will open the door to answer the knocking, see the gnome, grab the bottle of wine, close the door. He looks at his suddenly empty, empty hand and he looks at the glasses that are still on the tray in his other hand, and he says, oh, 
You were right. Uh, Flint <laughs> will open up the door and grab one of the glasses and then shut the door. But it's not for the wine. He just thinks it's shiny. Yeah. I didn't think for a second. I'm gonna walk to the like seating area for the restaurant and just wait until breakfast is served. Does anybody else uh, go and join Varys, or are you guys just day drinking? So, Flint is going to be holding the glass, but staring at Mira. As I'm waiting, I'm going to do my prognostication, so everyone gets plus one AC for the rest of the day. Fantastic, all right. All right, so you're, you're, you're sitting there making your own cup of tea uh, while, waiting for, uh, while waiting for your breakfast? Kelly Seth is gonna join in waiting for the breakfast, just kinda like still a bit groggy. Doesn't really seem like a morning person. Yeah, so Mary will take a few long swigs of the wine, notice Flint, hold out the bottle. You want some? Instead, he just points at the door. I think the door can drink. Uh, he's gonna <laughs> open the door and then point. Flint will get his stuff together, grab, grab the bottle. Unceremoniously stumble out. So you guys arrive in the main dining area to see Varys sort of swishing his tea around while sitting at a at a large round table. Is there anybody else here? Uh, you don't I see think. anybody. It seems quite deserted. Yep. Yeah, Mirror will take a seat at the table, look at Varys's tea, hold up the wine bottle, and say, "I can make that dwarven for you." Both in character. <laughs> <laughs> At about this time, uh, with a little bit of a clatter, the door that was partially ajar behind the desk opens fully, and the very same gnome from last night comes out, followed by uh, a much smaller and younger gnome that Archie's Varys recognizes. He kind of. What gnome uh, have eyes? The gnome does oh, yeah, the... I, 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 You know what, honestly, I'm only surprised that you haven't been doing this to the other party members. Oh, what happened soon? Well, what's Here, happened? I, Tiger, just, just so that you know, uh, Fly Cheese has just come into an ability where he can look into somebody's eyes and learn something about them by sort of skimming the top of their thoughts. If he uses that Amira, will he become drunk? He might feel a sudden sensation of drunkenness if that's the primary core thing about him. It'll go away once the, uh, once the effect stops. The father gnome, who introduces himself, by the way, as Bezeril, he lays a plate of egg and fried potato and, uh, and sausages uh, down before you. And the, the small child uh, carries some uh, biscuits and a little thing of creamer, and he puts it on the table right next to you, fly cheese. Uh, I'm gonna look the kid in the eyes and use soul window. Uh, you find yourself factory senses uh, through this young child's memory. Appears to be old stonework, uh, some sort of former structure now crumbling, and suddenly, in, in, in and among those ruins, you see a tall, male human striding out, and then another. And they're sort of like talking to each other and laughing loudly. They are armored and armed, carrying swords on their sides. And their backs are these sort of like red cloaks. And then you find yourself back in your body. And is like, um, excuse me, why are you staring at my son? I do um, future readings. If you want, I can do uh, future reading while my compatriots in the cart outside uh, get their breakfast since I have some extra tea left over. Oh. Well, while we're having breakfast, Mira will ask about what exactly happened with Gundren. Apparently they kept Gundren and took him to a, another location. Do you want me to like, go a performance to see how well it goes over? But I, I do the whole, hey, it, here's, here's my magical cup of tea. I need you to drink of it so I, we can see the leaves underneath uh, and tell your future. Yes, absolutely. Go, go ahead and roll performance to see how well it takes. He seems really excited about it, if that's, uh, if that's any consolation for you. You see a shape that uh, could hypothetically be interpreted uh, as uh, sort of a, a, a sword shape, and also one that uh, seems similar almost to the alchemical similar symbol for fire. 
based on the mythical symbols that I see within your leaves, I ah. see that your life has been affected by the warfare. Uh, as you can see, there is the sword, the symbol of the soldier, and flame, the symbol of destruction. Yes, times have been very tough of late. Happened to be because of goblins raiding the city, town. That's part of it, certainly. Um, you may have noticed that it was a, a mere silver to uh, spend the night. Um, I have had to slash prices a little bit. As you can see, you, you are the only paying customers here. Between the raids going on outside of the city, it's kind of been preventing a lot of, a lot of the trade. Uh, a lot of the caravans have been disrupted. I won't get into it too far, but uh, we have our own troubles in town as well. Uh, I guess the others eat without issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll come in and eat. Uh, I assume the others are taking their shift, uh, watching the cart. However, in, in the light of day, uh, Elia Seth and, uh, and, uh, Flint and, and Era, probably mostly just Calia Seth, uh, you, you notice that there is a sign hanging from the far end that says stable. Yeah, if we are the shipment meant for Balthan's provisions, we, we should probably take the cart over there. Oh, and I, um, Flip a copper to nostril for looking after the cart. Alright! And she bites it. I've seen, people <coughs> do that, but I've seen people do that before, and I know that's what you're supposed to do when you get money. Yep, yeah, well, we, we take the cart to Barthens Provisions. Uh, you, you roll up to Barthens Provisions. Even in even in this newer part of town, you can tell that uh, quite a lot of the structures that you see are not actually viable living structures. They're, they're uh, old stone structures, possibly they might even be hundreds of years old. Many of them not more than just the foundations. Barthen's provisions, however, appears to be one of those old stone structures onto which sort of a, a wooden structure has been grafted. An original structure that was reclaimed and built into a new structure. Door is open, and there is a smell of wood smoke on the inside, uh, and a little bit of smoke curling up from the chimney. I walk in and say hello. Oh, right. And, uh, uh, if you have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, you can tell a lot about a person whether they're just like, if they're just carrying around eyes, they can barely or not. <laughs> Oh, wait, is- oh my god, yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't did understand it until Cody read it. That's, all right, so, um, yeah, okay, so, uh, the eyeless witch, but she has eyes in a jar over there, so you're good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to make a cult of eyeless day. people. Was that? Yeah, when looking into the eyes of a humanoid, it never specifically states that they have to be in the head of said humanoid. <laughs> oh my god. See, this is why we're doing a play test, all right? <laughs> That's good to know. I might be a little bit more specific about that going forward. If I look good around, call. say, Bolton's provisions, are there any eyes in a jar? You do not see any eyes in a jar. This actually appears to be a fairly bog-standard feed store. This is a uh, feed store, uh, sort of an agricultural supply, sort of a general store. It's, you know, not being high fantasy up in here. Notice, uh... You know, at the far end, behind the counter, a copper dragonborn. A little bit older. He's got a little bit of kind of like a waddle under his chin. Sort of, he's wearing a, he's wearing a broad-brimmed hat. He says, uh, oh, Howdy there. Uh, can I help you? Uh, I, I, again, I used Soul Window on him, so I was waiting. Right, right, yes. Okay, so he looks well, up, you make eye contact. Good luck using Soul Window when all you hear now is Flint playing with the Spurs. So you, you, you low-key hear that in the background. Okay, so you find yourself, once again, sort of falling through time into this uh, this gentleman's shoes. It's uh, sort of evening time. There's firelight playing across a game board in front of you. This is a game that you, yourself, uh, Varys, probably know all about. It's like the equivalent of, like, chess in this world. Very common game. Very uh, tactical. He sees... He's looking down at the game board, and he sees human hand pick up a piece, and move it across the board. It's a devastating move. And you are simultaneously frustrated and flummoxed, but also kind of kind of glad. Like, you, you, you're, you're sort of proud of him for, for coming up with this really brilliant move. You, Varys, easily see 
how he could probably win this game in a couple of moves. Mm -hmm. And with that, you are lifted out of the situation and placed back in your own body. He just sort of like tries to catch your eye again. He's like, sir, excuse me, uh, are you all right? Yes. Um, we are, you were due a shipment here of uh, goods from... Oh, oh, goodness. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, you must be... You, you're, you're, you're Gundren's boys. Oh. Uh, uh, he just kind of quickly, quickly, like, scoots up off of the, uh, the, the stool, comes out from behind the counter, kind of rubbing his hands together. And we do have some shipments, but unfortunately some goblins attacked us on our way over here. Oh, dear. When Mr. Gundren didn't show up, uh, uh, I, I had rather assume that possibly that was happening um is gundren with you he hasn't he was he was meant to meet with us uh this morning uh, i assumed he'd be in before uh, the shipment was oh uh, no he got taken off by some goblins unfortunately that's terrible news about gundren he kind of looks through the boxes uh some of these are definitely not mine i think those and he points at the ones with uh sort of the blue lion head emblem that you guys found in the goblins lair last time Mm -hmm. Those, I believe, belong to Miss Greywind up the way there, uh, at the Lion Shield Coster, but, uh... But did you know anything about a castle? Uh, you hear Flint walking up to you, to, you, to the group, and he has the spurs on his boots. Uh, the castle? Uh, no castles around here as far as I know, but, uh, hard to say, this area hasn't been built up in quite some time. Uh, we're, we're pretty much the beacon of civilization out here in the wilds. Well, we do have reason to believe that this castle, what was it again, Cragmore Castle, has something to do with goblins and or cultists, potentially both, and we also have very good reason to believe that that is exactly where Gondrin Rockseek was located at this very point in time. You think he's alive? Uh, we, we have been told he's alive, by somebody we killed. Well, he kind of perks up a little bit of that, he's like, oh, Gondrin's alive. That changes a few things. That's 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 sensational news. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm afraid I, I don't know the name Cragmore Castle. Uh, I don't know of any castles at all around here. Do you know somebody who Goodness. might know? Somebody who might know. Hmm, let me see. Here's Mr. Beeb. He's over the woodworker shop. He's got a library. He's a, bit, he's a mixture of a tinker and a historian. Uh, he knows the area pretty well. The Dendras might have known something, but... Uh, Unfortunately, they've uh, they've recently passed on. Yeah, you might be able to ask Darren Edermath. He's a good friend, and he's lived in this area for oh most of his life. He's actually one of those original Thunder Tree folks. Thunder Tree, the village of Thunder Tree. You guys can roll. Uh, you, uh, anybody who wants to can roll history. Flint, uh, the the name Thunder Tree doesn't. Yes, absolutely. The name Thunder Tree. Sounds familiar to Flint. Uh, you think it's probably a, a, a big important thing in this area. Uh, Varys, you know exactly what he's talking about. Thunder Tree, the village that lasted pretty much from ancient times in a way that uh, the original Phandalin did not. As you know, Phandalin was kind of wiped out during a war about 500 years ago. It's only recently started to be repopulated. But Thunder Tree was a village a bit far to the north of here at the foot of Mount Hotnow. Mount Hotnow is a volcano, as was discovered to great effect 30 years before the current date when it exploded. It erupted without warning. Thunder Tree is a village that was wiped out. Uh, much of its population was interred with it among the ash. Only a few scattered survivors managed to make it out. Some went to Neverwinter, some went to Waterdeep, further down the coast. Some came and tried to resettle the old scattered villages that came around. And that's actually sort of how Phandalin came to be repopulated. And, and, and you know, Barthen kind of, uh, he kind of paraphrases that. It's like, oh yes, the old village. Uh, they're settlers from over there. Mr. Darren Edermatt's been in the area for 30 years. It was barely a town when he come to it. He might be a person to talk to about the history of the area. He 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 uh he runs the orchard out on the uh, the edge of town there. Regarding Gundren, we were intended to do some business. This disappearance is quite disturbing. Uh, I sure hope this wasn't about the mine. Uh, what happened to this? What about this mine? One that uh, Gundren is going to reopen. 
whole reason why he's coming to the town with all this stuff. Did he not tell you? Well, he's just looking for a new place to write poetry. It must seem like a nice place. I really didn't care about what Conchant was going to do. He's a little bit silly. Uh, you know, he was uh, going on about how he was going to take on new help in Neverwinter for setting up this mine and all of the possibilities it was going to bring to Fandolin. I, I just assumed that he told you about it. Yeah, no, um, he, he, he's intending to open up a mine that's supposed to revitalize the industry here in Fandolin, and uh, he seemed really worried that uh, there were those who might be opposed to him opening said mine, though he didn't really tell me the details. But he said he was going to pick up some bodyguards and get some protection, hire some skilled hands to protect the uh, the caravans from, uh, you know, any any sort of attack, either from bandits or for something. He sort of hinted at something a little bit more direct, like uh, that he might be, might, there might be groups that had it out for him or something. Flint's going to look at Mira. If that's not the case, then uh, that's this, well, I think it was supposed to be a secret. Mostly just me and uh, Lenine and uh, Mr. Bezeril from over at the Ram and Shackle knew about it. What I can think... you tell us about this mine? Who previously owned it? Who might be invested it was... in it? It actually did run in Mr. Rockseeker's family, so it is his by right. Perhaps you've heard of this mine of Fandelver. And roll credits. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, a legendary mine that uh, was mined out in this area. Oh, Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, it uh, was lost during the war with the Logbalogs and the subsequent occupation by the Orc Nation. <laughs> uh, as many as many uh, villages and locations in this area were, you know, there's a lot of ple- a lot of people went out to try and find it, but uh, nobody was successful until Mister Gundren. He came around about a month ago and said, "I found it. I've found the lost mine of Fandelver, and we are all going to be rich." You can hear the excitement in my voice right now, I'm sure. I do apologize for this flagrant display of emotion. I'm not normally this uh, excitable. In short order, you've managed to move every one of Elmar Barthen's particular crates uh, into uh, Barthen's provisions. It's going uh, he... to start taking the horses and the cart down to the stables. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Uh, excuse me, young sir. Mm-hmm. Spurs? Yeah, they're very nice. I, I agree. Uh, should you like to pay for those? Uh, How much are these? He's gonna toss a gold. Let me get your change. Let me get your change. He goes. He goes quickly back to like the lockbox that's behind when, the counter. When he runs back inside, Flint's gonna look down. But I've already changed, and he's gonna start walking off. <laughs> <laughs> By the time he gets back with a handful of silver pieces, you're already gone. He looks at Ferris and he says, "Y'all are staying together, right?" I'll just pass it here. I'll make sure it gets back to him somehow. Uh, he hands you a he hands you a handful of uh, eight uh, eight silver pieces, and also uh, ten gold for him, and ten gold for you. Also hands ten gold to Kaliaseth, and not knowing that this was not part of the original deal, he hands ten gold to Mira. You ma- you said that it's not part of the original deal. Was I on a different kind of contract? You are. Uh, yeah, you're, you're you're being paid through. He. Uh, the way it works with the Bodyguards Guild is the principal pays the Bodyguards Guild and the Bodyguards Guild pays you. Uh, in that case, Mira will correct the mistake. I've, I've been paid by the Guild. So that's yours. Oh, oh, you must be one of his body. Oh, that's terrible news. Did you see what happened? I didn't. And that's all he's going to say on the subject. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, Mira will let uh, Barthen know that we're at the Ram and Shackle at the moment, if anything else comes to mind. Oh. Or if anyone comes through that he learns anything. That's the, that's the best choice. Uh, yeah, I would stay at the Ram and Shackle. Bezra will see you taken care of. Uh, and I would probably avoid the Sleeping Giant if you're talking about places to stay in town. Why well, avoid that place? A bunch of rowdies there. A uh, young Miss Robble who works there, uh, she's a lovely sort, but uh, the place has been taken up by some uh, ruffians of late. It's uh, it's not a good place to go. Uh, they'd basically probably be picking a fight with you if you went in there. A bunch of strong well, strong sorts like yourself, they'd see you as a challenge. So I would avoid it. Varys, I have an idea. Uh, yeah. 
if we deal with these ruffians, she may give us free drink. I mean, I've got to go to the um, this library and research this mine a bit more. If you and Flint and everyone else wants to go have a bar fight, uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll join you later. Mira will consider this and then start running after Flint. Now, where's Flint at? Uh, I was heading towards the I'm... stables. Are you leading the Are you leading the cart back down to the stables? Yes. Another gnome comes out. Uh, this This one is a, a female gnome. And she says, "Oh, oh, hello. Would you like to um? Would you like to store your uh, your cart, sir?" Flint nods. Well, that's that's sensational. Very well, okay, just, uh, just lead it right in, and she, uh, she sort of, like, opens up the, uh, the wide double doors of the stables, and you can see that there's kind of, like, a, sort of, a, a an elderly horse that seems to be primarily composed of elbows, uh, off in one corner, but apart from that, uh, numerous stalls here are empty. So, I don't um, know and, enough about horses to understand that? Uh, uh, and, uh, when you leave, uh, she closes it, um, and locks the door. And uh, she'll she'll give you like a receipt, like sort of like a coat check receipt there. So I assume that I'm seeing uh, Mira come down the way now. Oh yeah, Mira's coming down right after you. In fact, uh, Mira probably arrives when you're when you're part way through uh, dealing with the oxen. I'm, I'm giving you the receipt. But with the receipt and being taken back by Flint, he's completely forgotten about the bar. So we'll just put the receipt in his pocket and head into the inn to try and find and- Soda. Walk into uh, the Ram and Shackle. Lady Sildar is sitting sort of slumped back in a chair. The pained look on her face and her legs sort of up on a on a um, on another chair or uh, yeah, like on another chair. I don't imagine this is the sort of place that has like tassocks or ottomans or anything. <laughs> there is a form sort of hunched over her uh, that appears to be examining her hip. As you approach, the figure stands up. Uh, and uh, the, the the tall figure of uh, of an elven woman uh, wearing sort of like a, a white cloak with a holy symbol seems to be a four leaf clover pinned to her like her upper chest her collarbone. It, she sort of acknowledges you with a nod and everything, and then she turns her attention back to uh, Sildar. Oh, I'm sorry, Lady Sildar. Uh, I'm afraid that this, this is quite broken, and it's already started to heal back the wrong way. Uh, my magic's are probably not going to be much of a help, uh, you know, just in the short term. And uh, I've been working on this new technique. It's sort of a magic into, unto itself. It's called physical therapy. And I think that perhaps if we do that, within a number of weeks, you'll probably be back to your old self. But I would ask you to accompany back to the shrine, and uh, we can get you kitted out over there. Eeks? Going to take weeks to get back on my feet? I could probably break that back into place for you. No, 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 <laughs> no, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm absolutely fine and capable of dealing with this my own self. I'll have uh, her, 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 uh, her, it will be rebroken in a, in a medically safe environment. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... no, 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 no need for, for any of that. <laughs> why don't we, why don't we pop back to, uh, to Varys over at, uh, at uh, Barthens real quick. Varys would have left at roughly the same time um, Flint and oh, gotcha. Charles did, but he went to the, was it the woodwork, as you said, there was a library above it? Yes, yes. Uh, as as you are leaving Barthens Provisions, by the way, he uh, sort of calls out to you, he says, uh, hey, make sure you come back uh, day after tomorrow. In the morning, Mr. Gundren's brothers are supposed to return from their extended stay in the wilderness at the mine. Uh, I'm, I, I, I would like you to be there to update them on what's going on with their brother, and perhaps you can come up with a course of action after that. Understandable. I, um, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the information you've given us. And you'll probably see the other two disappear into the uh, the Ram and Shackle Inn as you walk across the street to the uh, uh, across the street and down a little bit to the woodworker. I assume that Kalyaseth went back to the Ram and Shackle as well. So Varys, you're you're off by yourself at the woodworker. There is, however, a set of stairs that leads to a second floor door uh, off on the side of the the, the house. Uh, not on the door. You hear a bit of a you hear a bit of a grumbling sound from 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 up inside. You hear the sound of a hand sort of smacking against the door, as though somebody had sort of swiped at the doorknob 
and not really gained any purchase on it. And then finally managed to catch it. Door latch opens. And you see before you a small elderly goblin smoking a pipe. The typical question I see when I first see people. Uh, yes, he does have eyes. Uh, so you look into the and uh, you suddenly know uh, the entire plot of a historical fiction novel about the uh, the fall of the Log Balog Empire. It's a little saucy. You realize this is a book that you have just interrupted him reading. Hello, I uh, hear the local uh, librarian here. Uh, I am the esteemed poet Varus Diamond Jew. You probably have one of my collections in this library. Um, I was just wondering if I could learn a little bit about local history. Yeah. He just kind of like looks you up and down and he says, Eh, eh, Diamond Dew. Eh, that doesn't sound familiar, but uh, I'll come in if you want to talk, I guess. He leaves the door open and kind of stalks off back to uh, where you see like a, a, a couple of small-sized armchairs, a crackling fire, and uh, a sleep fairly modest library. It's probably about uh, two two sets of shelves worth of, uh, of, of materials, but uh, perhaps to the, 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 the less learned and less metropolitan folks who live out here, uh, it probably seems like uh, quite a trove of books. So, uh, what would you like to know? Uh, do you know about uh, a local mine? Local mine? Well, uh, mining is a major industry in this area. Uh, any particular mine, or, uh... <laughs> the, the, the local legendary mine? Uh, I say, like, overpronouncing the words. Oh, oh, you must be talking about Fandelver. Yes. Apex Cave, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, uh... I, you know, the, some people say that that was just a legend that, that, that never really existed. And he goes through and he's, um, flitting his fingers about the spines of his books as he's talking. Yes, uh, back before the Log the Log occupation of these lands, uh, it was a very famous mine. Uh, the other mines in the areas, they, they, they have the, uh, the, the raw ingredients to make bronze or steel or, uh, other things that you might not in the ground coal as you like it. Uh, Fandelver had all these things and more. They had, uh, this, uh, metal called Arcanum. It's, uh, kind of, uh, central to, uh... Ah! And he finds the, he finds the book that he's looking for. He lays it out before you. It's a leather-bound book. It's kind of a slim volume. Uh, the title is The Lost Lands. He starts flipping through it. He's like, yes, Arcanum is this, is a, a metal that naturally sort of, uh, magnetizes, uh, magnetic, or magnetic magical forces. Uh, it's, it's, it's used in, uh, the creation of, uh, magical weapons. Uh, this whole industry in this area was, uh, oh, it revolutionized the whole thing to have a mine full of arcanum this close to Neverwinter. You know, sadly, it was lost. Ah! And, you know, he finds the page that he was looking for, and he, he presents it to you. It says, The Lost Mine of Fandelver, at the top of the heading. Is this in common, I'm guessing? It is in common, yes. Uh, and I'm gonna sit down and, like, start reading the book and then taking notes of uh, the, the key stuff. We can just kind of pop back to uh, Mira has just threatened to help Bildar by re-breaking her hip. Oh, uh, Mira will sit down near Soda. So, uh, next move is finding Gundren, right? Uh, it looks like it's gonna be your next move. As much as I hate to say it, this is it's kind of on you at the moment. I know I've been critical view in the past, but know what it is to be a bodyguard whose principle is taken. Bodyguards who lose their principles don't last long in the guild. You have to find Gundren. Our, our, our future as bodyguards depends on it. If, if, if he's lost, if he's killed, done for in this industry. They're just gonna look at Flint and say, it's going to be a long week. Uh, do you have any questions or comments uh, regarding the playing of your characters? Okay, so I do have something. Soul Window. Absolutely fantastic. I feel like it does bog the game down a little bit, especially if you plan on using it on every NPC. 
believe the precise uh, wording that I use, uh, I, I have an author's note on on this, uh, is uh, it can be that you step into the shoes of an entire memory and learn the entire life story of these characters. Or you could just say, oh yeah, you look into his eyes and you instinctively know that he is allergic to parsnips. Yeah, That's a good place to leave it, I think. 